So in his conversation with the white moderates, what's striking is that, that while some of the conversation, as we've all said, addressed the question of time and patience, I think a lot of it has addressed the question of complacency. And, and what he seems to be saying in the letter and what he said elsewhere is he's trying to engage people when he says raise the tension, not just raise the tension so people will say, okay, you win, we'll stop, but to get people to think, to get people to think seriously, to challenge whatever their own particular instincts may be. That process is crucial. Now, it's a difficulty today because when you look around, there you can look at people of any political persuasion and they can tell you a long list of laws they think are terribly, terribly unjust. And by and large, they're decent people. They have, have enough very different ideas. One of the powers, I mentioned it before, while not everyone, I think, always has to be willing to suffer the consequences, one of the powerful aspects of suffering the consequences for disobedience is it tests the depth of our commitment to the cause. It's easy for any of us to say, well, that law shouldn't be enforced, and I don't like that one, and I'm on the left, and I don't like this one, I'm on the right, and I don't like that one. We can all say that in conversation, but to risk for it, to go out and, and take a chance, I think, is where the commitment is really tested. King was willing to test his own commitment, but he was also, in a sense, by raising the tension level, willing to test the commitments of others to complacency, to try to drag them into the dialogue, where instead of just saying, let's wait, let's slow down, they had to take a position. They had to say, either we're with you or we're against you. Uh, they had to have a reason. They had to engage in the conversation. That's crucial to that kind of, of disobedience. 